Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Brian and today we're here coming back with yet another amazing episode for my friends out in Japan. I found this video lingering in like the deep, deep skirts of the internet, so uh, let's check it out. Welcome back to American Reacts to History of Japan. Now I know the title may sound nice, but uh, from what I understand, this video is going to be borderline comedic, borderline somewhat true, so I don't know. You, once again, you guys are going to be able to leave your comments down below and let me know what you think. Speaking of down below, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have actually put a link in the description box where you could check out American Reacts to Japanese music. If you haven't already, check it out. It's pretty awesome. Anyways, this video is by an amazing YouTube named Bill Wirtz. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. I've recently discovered him. He's actually really freaking funny. But anyways, links to the original is also in the description box and check it out if you would like to. Otherwise, just watch it here with me. Why not? Well, my friends, check me out on Instagram if you haven't already. I got some pretty little pictures, just saying. But otherwise, let's go right ahead and dive right in. Japan is an island by the sea filled with volcanoes and it's In the year negative a billion, Japan might not have been here. In the year negative 40,000, it was here. And you could walk to it. And some people walked to it. Then it got warmer, some icebergs melted, it became an island, and now there's lots of trees. Because it's warmer. So now there's people on the island, they're basically sort of hanging out in between the mountains, eating nuts off trees, and using the latest technology, like stones, and bowls, ding dong, it's the outside world. Oh, we're still talking about the beginning the future, of time. Like really good metal, and crazy rice farms. Now you can make a lot of rice really, really quickly. That means if you own the farm, you own a lot of food, which is something everybody needs to survive. <laughs> so that makes you king. Rice farming and rice kingdoms spread across the land, all the way to here. The most important kingdoms were here, 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 and here. But this one was the most, most important, ruled by a heavenly super person, or emperor for short. Knock knock, get the door, it's religion. The new prince wants everyone to try this hot new religion from Biek to... I love how he's being serious. Religion, he said. No, said everybody. Try it, he said. <laughs> no, said everybody again, quieter this time. And so the religion was put into place, and all the rules that came with it. Then the government was taken over but it's by still another, like, and they made some reforms. I don't like know. Making the government govern more, and making the government more like Funny. China's government, which is a government that governs more. Hi, China, they said. Hi, dipshit, said China. Can you call us something else other than dipshit, said Japan. Like what, said China. How about Sunrise Land, said Japan. And they stole China's alphabet and wrote a book about themselves. And oh my god. And poetry and art and another book about themselves. <laughs> then they stopped moving the capital every time the emperor died and kept it in one place for a while, right here. And they conquered the north. Really? Finally. Get that squared away. A rich hipster named Kukai is bored with modern Buddhism, visits China, and learns a better version, which is more spiritual. Comes back, reinvents the alphabet, and causes art and literature to be great for a long time. <laughs> and the royal palace turned into such a dream world of art that they really didn't give a shit about running the country. So if you live outside the palace, how are you supposed to protect your shit from criminals? Hire a samurai. Everyone started hiring samurai. Rich, important people hired samurai. Poor people who could not afford to hire samurai did not hire samurai. Is that samurai actually true? What the heck? Powerful. More powerful than the government. So they made their own military government. Here, they let the emperor still be emperor, but the shogun is actually in control. Breaking news, the Mongols have invaded China. We've invaded China, said the Mongols. Please respect us or else we might invade you as well. Okay, said Japan. So the Mongols came over, ready for war, and died in a tornado. But they tried again. No and way. Had a nice time fighting with the Japanese, but then died in a tornado. Then the emperor overthrows the shogunate. Then the shogunate overthrows him back and moves to Kyoto and makes a new shogunate. And the emperor can still dress like an emperor if he wants. That's fine. <laughs> he has options now. Painting with less colors, collaborative poetry, plays, monkey fun, tea parties, gardening, architecture, flowers. It's time for who's going to be the next shogun. Usually it's the shogun's kid, but the shogun doesn't have a kid. So he tries to get his brother to quit being a monk and be the next shogun. He says, okay, but then the Shogun has a kid. So now who's it going to be? Oh. Well, now on your phones. And everyone voted so hard that the palace caught on fire and burned down. The Shogun actually didn't care. He was off somewhere doing poetry. And the whole country broke into pieces. Everyone is fighting with each other for local power. And it's anybody's game. Knock, knock. It's Europe. No, they're not here to take over. They just want to sell some shit. Like clocks. And guns. <laughs> and Jesus. So that's cool. But everyone's still fighting each other for control. Now with guns. And wouldn't it be nice to control the capital? Which right now is puppets, with no one controlling them. This clan is ready to make a run for it. But first, they have to trample this smaller clan, which is in the way. Surprise, the smaller clan wins. And the leader of that clan steals the idea of invading the capital and invades the capital. Oh that my goes god. Very well. He's about halfway through conquering Japan when someone who works for him Wow. Him, and then someone else who works for him kills them. And that guy finishes conquering Japan. And then he confiscated everybody's swords and made some rules. 
And now I'm going to invade Korea and then hopefully China, he said, and failed, and also died. But before oh, he died, okay. he told these five guys to take care of his five-year-old son until he's old enough to be the next ruler of Japan. And the five guys said, yeah, right. It's not going to be this kid. It's going to be one of us, because we're grown-ups. And it's probably going to be this guy, who happens to be way more rich and powerful than the others. A lot of people support him, but a lot of people support not supporting him. They have a fight, and he wins, and starts a new government, right here. And he still lets the This is such like a blast of information. Nice things, but don't get confused, this is the new government. But for some reason it's actually sticky. So strict, they close the country. No one can leave, and no one can come in. Except for the Dutch, if they want to buy and sell shit. But they have to do it right here. Now that the entire country was not at war with itself, the population increased a lot. Business increased, schools were built, roads were built, everyone learned to read, books were published, there was poetry, plays, sexy times, puppet shows, and dumb stuff. What? Studies. People started it, to study European you just went science casually through books that. they bought from the Dutch. We're talking geography, skeletons, physics, chemistry, astronomy, and maybe even electricity. Over time, the economic and cultural prosperity began to gradually slow down. Knock knock. Uh -oh. It's the United States. With huge boats. With guns. Gunboats. Open the country. Stop having it be closed, said the United States. <laughs> There's really nothing they could do, so they signed a contract that lets the United States, Britain, and Russia visit Japan anytime they want. Choshu and Satsuma hated this. That sucks, they said. This sucks. And with almost very little outside help, they overthrew the shogunate and somehow made the emperor the emperor again and moved no to way. Canada, they got him verified. The Eastern capital. They made a new government, which was a lot more Western. They made a new constitution that was pretty Western and a military that was pretty Western. And do you know what else is Western? That's right, it's conquering stuff. So what can we conquer? Korea. They conquer Korea, taking it from its previous owner, China, and then go a little bit further. And Russia rushes in out of nowhere and says, Stop, no, you can't take that. We were going to build a railroad through here to try and get some warm water. <laughs> and Russia builds their railroad, supervised by a shit ton of soldiers. And then when the railroad is done, they downgrade it to a fuck ton. Did I say downgrade? I meant upgrade. And Japan <laughs> says, can you maybe chill? And Russia says, <laughs> Can you like relax, you man? Japan is kind of scared of Russia. You'll never guess who's also kind of scared of Russia. Great Britain. So Japan and Great Britain make an alliance together so they can be a little less scared of Russia. Feeling confident, Japan <laughs> goes to war against Russia. Just for a moment, the honesty is killing it's me. Time for world war the world is about to have a war because it's the 1900s and weapons are getting crazy and all these empires are excited to try them out on each other. <laughs> Meanwhile, Japan has been enjoying conquering stuff and wants more. And the next what thing on the is list this? is this part of China and lots of tiny islands. All that stuff belongs to Germany, which just had war declared on it by Britain because Britain was friends with Belgium, which was being trespassed by Germany in order to get to France to kick France's ass because France is friends with Russia, who was getting ready to kick Austria's ass because Austria was getting ready to kick Serbia's ass because someone from Serbia <laughs> shot the leader of Austria's ass. Or actually shot him in the head. And Britain is currently friends with Japan, so you know what that means. Duh, uh, no. Japan take the Which they wanted to do anyway, so they called Britain on the telly to sort of let them know. And then they did it. And they also helped Britain a little here and there with some errands and stuff. Now the war is over, and congratulations Japan, you technically fought in the war, which means you get to sit at the negotiating table with the big dudes, where they decided who owns what. And yes, Japan gets to keep all that shit they stole from Germany. You also oh get to join God. the post-war mega alliance. The I didn't know that, that is so crazy. Is to to take over the world. The Great Depression is bad, and Japan's economy is now crappy, but the military is doing just fine, and it evades Manchuria. In the League of Nations, it's like, No, don't do that. If you're in the League of Nations, you're not supposed to take over the world. And Japan said, How about I do anyway? <laughs> and Japan invaded more and more and more and more of China, and was planning to invade the entire East. You've got mail. It's from Germany, the new leader of Germany. He has a cool mustache, and he's trying to take over the world and needs friends. This also got forwarded to Italy. They all decided to be friends because they had so much in common. It's time for World War II. Germany is invading the neighbors. Then they invade the this neighbors. This is brutal, neighbors. man. Then the neighbors' neighbors' neighbors who happened to be Britain said, "Holy shit!" And the United mm -hmm. States started helping Britain because they are good friends, and started not helping Japan because they're friends, and our friends are not friends. Plus, they're planning on invading the entire ocean. The United States is also working on a large, very huge bomb, bigger than any other bomb ever, just in case. But they still haven't joined the war. War looks bad on TV, and the United States is really starting to care about their image. But then Japan spits on them in Hawaii and challenges them to war. And they say yes. And then Germany, as a symbol of friendship, declares war on the United States also. So the United States goes to war in Europe, and they help the gang chase Germany back into Germany. And they also start chasing Japan back into Japan. And they haven't used the bomb yet and are curious to see if it works. So they drop it on Japan. Wow, I just learned so much off of this. That I never even learned off of school. Like, and the funniest part is that, like, it's funny and it's so quick and to the point. Holy crap. Did the video just end? 
The United States installed a new government, inspired by the United States government, with just the right ingredients for a post-war economic miracle. And Japan starts making TVs, VCRs, automobiles, and camcorders as fast as they can, and also better than everybody else. They get rich, <laughs> and the economy goes wild, and then the miracle wears off. But starts everything's booming. still pretty cool, I guess. Bye. And just like that, apparently we ended it. What the heck did I just watch? But holy crud, there was so much information that I actually feel bad that I got, I got, I got some useful information off of this. It's crazy how much reality is like actually going on here and like how subtle he is, but yeah, how quick and funny he is with it. Like for example, like when he was saying like, oh, you cannot produce more rice. What does more rice mean? <laughs> you become the king. <laughs> And so yeah, and then they started talking about the kings and all this other craziness and apparently how like Europeans actually introduced religion and it's like knock knock. So it's like, hello. Yes, literally that's the way he put it. Just one, two, three and out. And it was so freaking entertaining to watch. I actually never knew that in Japan when you guys had so many different like emperors, like once they would pass away, you guys were like changing like where like the capital city or what, where the main district was. Like I had no idea that was a thing. But I'm glad you guys decided like to just keep it in one spot. <laughs> the explanation of the wars were actually pretty interesting for me because I never understood how the United States got involved with that. Like, mind you, I like I've looked into all the world wars and stuff like that. But like, I had never particularly sat there and asked like, hey, why, why is the United States even involved? So pretty cool. So Japan, I guess, kind of brought us in. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm Brian. How you doing? One thing that I did find very interesting was how you guys developed like your actual language. Apparently it was inspired by China. By the way, if any of you guys are noticing that some of the facts are wrong, feel free to leave a comment down below. I love reading what you guys have to say. It's kind of interesting how all of these worlds like play a part together and like my, oh, mind boggling fact. Apparently Japan ended up adopting these other islands from Germany, so I'm gonna use that word, adopting. That's pretty nice. That's pretty awesome. I guess World War One definitely played out pretty good in your favor, Japan. That's pretty nice. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, to hit that little like button like that to show your amazing support. If you did not know, we do have a PO box linked down below and also right over there. In case you want to send any handwritten letter, postcard, or anything else in between, just please let me know. I would love to personally thank you. Stick around. We got more amazing videos at the end of this one, including some more Japanese content. So stick around. And until next time, my friends, hasta la pasta, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Bye.